check you meet the eligibility criteria. Second step is agree who your senior mental health lead should be. Then you apply for your grant. Hello, I'm Liz Robson Kelly, CEO and founder of Worth It, psychologist, creator of the Wellbeing Club. So this is quite a scary and frightening statistic that I've read, which is 1.5 million young people will develop a mental health problem in three to five years. Now, although this refers to young people, our primary school children are going to be young people in the next three to five years. So it's really important that we are teaching children and young people capacities and strategies for well-being. And the best way to do that is through a whole school approach. So what the government have said is that in order to increase that capacity, we will encourage all schools by 2025 to have a senior mental health lead. Now, it's not mandatory, you don't have to have one, but that you are being encouraged to have a senior mental health lead. So the government are now backing a whole school approach to wellbeing. And as part of that, they are offering these senior mental health lead grants. So the grants are £1,200 for all eligible schools. And I'll go into what eligibility means soon. Eligible schools to have one grant to train one person. We came up with a little infographic to explain the process. The first step is check you meet the eligibility criteria. Second step is agree who your senior mental health lead should be. Then you apply for your grant that are, um, which you have to do on the Department for Education website. And there has been issues last time with the links not working and all sorts of technical issues, which uh, as a provider, I don't have access to that website because we are a provider, not a school and only schools can or colleges can log into that system to apply for the funding then you choose your course then you get evidence of your course which means booking and committing to a course there's a lot of people got stuck at this point where they got really confused about what course to choose i'll go into that as well and also then you have to upload and submit evidence and the course code um, when the department ask for it. Now, depending on when you've enrolled on your course and when what sort of window of funding that you're applying within, they'll be asking for that at different times. Eligible. What does eligible mean? Eligible, there's two, two parts to being eligible. One is like technically eligible and the other one is ready to do it, I suppose. Are you really ready? I'm going to talk about that. So um, first thing is, that your what type of school you are. So are all state funded education settings that are in receipt of ESFA, including mainstream academies and maintained schools, alternative provision, pupil referral units, special academies and maintained schools, further education colleges, sixth form colleges, special post-16 institutions, non-maintained special schools and local authority schools so most schools apart from independent schools are eligible you are not eligible if you've already had grant funding for the senior mental health lead training already you only get one go one grant for one person for one school 1200 pounds no more you can't have it twice and then is it more like are you ready so what the department have said is that you are, are you making a commitment? And this is like so subjective and so personal and, and can vary from individual to individual, school to school, practitioner to practitioner. So making commitment according to the part, Department for Education means um, that you have the commitment of your school or college leadership team to implement a whole school or college approach to mental health and wellbeing. Your SLT have said, we are going to do something about this and we are committing to that. So even before you apply for this funding, some hard questions have to be asked around how committed are we to doing this work to make, because it's a lot of work, like developing a whole school approach to mental health and wellbeing. It's not a bolt on. And I think like when um, the perception can be that this is, a nicety or this is just a bolt on or this is a fad or this is something we can do really quickly and just kind of shoehorn it into the million other things that we're doing 
and it isn't it's really really important and will transform the school it is a change initiative it is a change program and if you're not ready for that that's okay you can wait there's going to be more rounds of funding every year for the next few years maybe the time isn't right now maybe SLT have been through loads of redundancies or loads of change or maybe you've just become a trust maybe just joined a trust or maybe you've just become an academy and there's been so much upheaval the last thing you want to do now is more change and change the whole school approach to mental health and well-being although that probably would help with a lot of those things the timing could just be really bad and that's going to make it really really hard for the senior mental health lead to make the change that they want to implement are you ready for change is your slt ready to commit to this and if you're really excited and you really want to develop school mental health and you're the senior you're the person that wants to be the senior mental health lead or you have that title and you're now trying to choose your funding how successful is your initiative going to be if your slt are not ready for it so how committed are you and what does commitment mean to you? And these are all questions you could have in a team meeting. What? How would we know that we're committed to implementing school mental health? What are the signs? Would we have mental health on the um, meeting agendas? Would we have, have it as the, the top, you know, as an item that we have on the team meeting? Is it something we want to put in our school development plan? Then, have you identified a senior mental health lead? who is ready to receive the training. So some people are doing the training who haven't actually officially been made the senior mental health lead. Some of the senior mental health leads are not senior people, although technically they should be in order to be eligible for this funding. Um, and have they been given enough time to be able to do the training to implement the changes that they want to make? I would say that's another sign of commitment. So if your school isn't ready to do that, then that's OK. If you're not sure what a senior mental health lead is or does, we have a whole downloadable mini training course, mini training workshop and job spec, which I will link to in the video uh, details below. And um, you'll be able to get that off of our website. I think this is more important than whether you're technically eligible. It's like, are you psychologically ready? Is, is there capacity to make this a success? Is really the question you want to ask yourself as a school leader or your leadership team so who should be the senior mental health lead technically the department have said that they should be a school senior leader or work closely with SLT now I know in reality that that isn't the case because a lot of people are being appointed to be senior mental health leads and they aren't senior leaders the issue with that is Unless your SLT are really supportive and, and are viewing you in this role as an agent of change who are, you're they're willing to listen to and they're going to give you time on the agenda to speak about the things you want to speak about, it's going to be harder unless you are SLT. And even if you are SLT, it still can be hard to get the buy-in of your colleagues that are working with you as well. This is why this commitment, this make a commitment point I was making earlier is really important that you are able to influence change. So within that senior role, that you're able to influence change, even if you're not senior, maybe maybe you've been, you're acting up or you've been given some responsibility to lead on this project, that you're motivated. This is hard work. It's really one of, it's gonna make the most significant difference in your school. And you know, you're gonna make a huge change, but it can be tough It and being motivated, being resilient, keeping persevering, um, are traits that you're going to have to have. Being able to look after your own well-being because your well-being is really, really important in order to lead this work and lead this change. And somebody who has the capacity to do the work required. So it's not somebody who's only maybe part-time who's given two minutes a, every fortnight to work on this. You do need some extensive time. You need, a, you know, some of the courses are two full days. My programme is bite-sized and it's online. The longest kind of live element is 90 minutes because we know that people have got a real lack of capacity so built a program that's completely on demand and accessible in that way but um you're still going to have to do the follow-up tasks and find some time to do the activities required to make the change to develop whole school mental health that's why this making a commitment is really important so have you got the time have is there some workload that you need to give you know alec you know 
let go of or give to somebody else so that it frees up your capacity to do this work and that's thinking time too and I know I work with teachers a lot is they don't have a lot of thinking time or reflection time so the kind of key senior mental health role or duties will be to develop the whole school approach which is one little bullet point but it's massive oversee the intervention work so oversee the development of a repertoire of early intervention approaches that so you're increasing that capacity for more children and more young people to access early prevention and prevent mental health problems developing in the first place that's what worth it specializes in that's where we come from a bottom-up approach and um, now we work with whole school communities to build those referral pathways so everyone can get access when they need it earlier Increase staff capacity to support with that, including looking after their own mental health and well-being, and then monitor and evaluate the whole thing, which is a lot of work. <laughs> and realistically, although the funding is for one year and you can make good progress in one year, you need to develop a whole school approach to mental health and well-being and it would be fully embedded is the six years it's a whole cohort going through from, say you're in a primary reception to year six or a secondary year seven through to whenever they leave year 11, year 13. I've gone into a lot of depth about checking that you meet the eligibility criteria and who, who should be one of your senior mental health leads. And now let's talk about how to apply for a grant. So that bit sounds so easy, but this is about choice and it's about thinking about what kind of course you want to go on. So <clears throat> there are today, as I film this, 102 different courses. And you think, oh, that's loads of choice. That's a good thing. Actually, it can be a bad thing because it's too much choice. And they, there are some tools that um, Department of Education has developed for you to decide are you beginner, intermediate or advanced and then that can help you narrow down the choices but the, I've made a video about how to choose and the process of choice and narrowing down your choices which I'll link to above. So you have to apply for the grant and you have to go through the Department for Education's process. So you apply for your grant and the D3 say yes you've got it. Then you choose your provider they have to have a course code. You can't just book any course that you fancy. Like we have other courses, but they're not eligible for this funding. So you can only do, in our case, Wellbeing Club, but in other, other different providers have got um, courses with a specific course code. They're the ones that you need. So official course, you book the course, you get evidence of booking. So in our case, that's an invoice. It might be different for different providers. You keep that safe, you get the course code. Then when the D3 request that evidence, you have to fill in a second form, a different online form on their system to submit that evidence and put the course code in. And then after that, they send you the money. And I don't know the timeframes of how long that takes. It can be a bit of a chicken and egg scenario because some schools can't afford to pay out of their own budget and, they and then get that money back and put it back in. They're waiting for the actual money to be received which means they can't start, start the courses. And then the Department of Education is saying, you have to start your course. So it's a bit of a delicate balancing act for some schools, especially if they haven't got that kind of cash to pay the provider up front and then claim the money back. But the Department of Education have guaranteed that they will give you the money. So I think there's some there was some nervousness last time that they, it was not going to happen, that the, they'd say you could have it and then snatch the rug from underneath you and not give it to you. And... That hasn't happened. We're just going to talk about what you can spend the money on. How much do you get? So the grant I said earlier is £1,200 per school for one person. Most courses cost 800 courses for senior mental health leads are around the 800 mark. So you're not really choosing based on price. You're choosing based on preference when you're going through the decision making process and picking your provider. So the remainder, what do you can you what are you allowed to spend that remainder on? So the remainder can be used on supply cover to take to pay for your uh, per, your senior mental health lead to come out of the classroom if they're classroom based to um, cover their time to engage in the work necessary to lead to change to make that happen. It can also fund other training courses, fund resources that you might need as a senior mental health lead or coaching to support you in your role. Like I said, leading change can be challenging. You might need extra support and 
um, coaching to really help you do that. And coaching doesn't mean that you can't cope and you're not doing it right. Everybody can benefit from coaching. I have a coach. It's about increasing your ability, your capacity, your performance, having someone to think things through with, action plan, support you, motivate you, and really be there for you with no agenda. So that's what coaching is for. You might want to spend it on assessment tools and you might want to spend it on promotional materials or staff awareness sessions to help you in your role as a senior mental health lead. But we own all of those things apart from supply cover, we actually have inside our program for the full price of 795. So they're not extra things, they're part of what our offer in our wellbeing club program. So our wellbeing club program gives you courses, multiple courses, all mapped to the eight principles, is resources um, and examples of other schools, what they have done to develop whole school mental health and wellbeing to really give you that support and ideas and strategies and a way forward that's personal to you and your school. We also provide coaching through online coaching logs. So yeah, they're your five steps to applying for senior mental health lead grant. Check you're eligible. Who should be your mental health lead? So the, I think the really important points are who should do, who, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Who is going to lead it and what's their role and remit that's going to make the biggest change and make the biggest difference? Then you've got the practicality. So there's a, like, there's, there's um, strategic decisions that need to make, be made as well as the practical process of applying for the grant. So it's not as simple as just fill in a form. There's a, so much decision making as part of this that is maybe why it's harder for schools to apply for than they originally realized when they first heard about it and you have to upload your booking and get the claim and sometimes depending on your financial situation it might take a while for that money to come through if you have found this useful and you're watching on youtube then give us a like if you are interested in getting more live stream support then join our facebook group for senior mental health leads there's a link below